Hello class, welcome to week seven. This video is to help you navigate through that website you need to use for topic seven, DQ1. Okay, so this is the website that will open when you click on that link in my extra help and instructions. These are the listing directory. We're gonna kind of filter through, look at some historic prices and show you how to use the table. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you open it up is you're gonna wanna search for your stock. When you search for your stock, you can use the symbol or you can search for the name. So for example, if I wanted to search Apple stock, if I were to search Apple, I type that in the filter, I hit enter, it would open up a list. And then I would choose from the list the one I was looking for. So I'm looking for Apple Incorporated, so I would choose the first one. If you know that symbol, you could go ahead and search the symbol as well. So in my filter, this time I'm going to put AAPL, that is a symbol for Apple, and then it'll pull up Apple. If you need to know that symbol, you could always try to Google your company and then look for the symbol, or you could try to Google that or search that company name here in the filter and it may be able to pop up as you're looking for it. Okay, once you search and you find the one you're looking for, go ahead and click on that symbol. It'll link you to the page. All right, so here is the page for Apple. Um, so at the very top, you can get a quote for the stock what it is right now. Um, you can see kind of some little stats right there. And then if you scroll, you see a chart. So this is the chart of the history of the stock. So you can kind of see where it's going up and going down and what it's doing over time. Um, remember, if you're investing in stock, if you want to invest kind of safely, you should choose one that's gradually moving up through time. And then below that, you should see the historic prices table. This is the table that's going to help you find your values. This is where we're gonna type in our dates and we'll search for the closing cost. For each of the stocks, we're gonna go ahead and use the closing cost just to keep it consistent amongst the stocks. Um, if you wanted to use the open costs, you could. You could use the high low, just keep it consistent. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the closing cost. Okay, so let's say today is February 11th, 2021. That's the day I'm making this video. So we'll say that's today, February 11th, 2021. I wanna find stock for one year ago today. So I would be finding stock for February 11th, 2020. So what I would do is I would go to my table and in the first box, I would make sure I have that date, February, February 11th of 2020. That one's already typed in for me, so that is good to go. Now, since I'm looking for stock on February 11th of 2020, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second date the same thing. So I'm going to do February 11th of 2020. So 2020, 02, 11, because the year goes first. Okay, so I'll type both those in. I'm searching for one day, so I put the same date in both boxes. I'll hit go. All right, so 2, 11, 2020, it pops up the information. You can grab the closing cost, and then you can go on to your next date. If you do this, it pops up the information. That is great. Um, so the stock market doesn't always have every day listed because the stock market doesn't include weekends. Um, it doesn't have those non-business days. So sometimes when you search, you won't get any information up. So what I recommend doing to help combat that is search a range of three days. And then in that range of three days, choose a stock that is closest to your target date. Okay, so for example, let's pretend that I'm searching for stock in February 9th of 2020. So I go up here, I type in February 9th of 2020 for each of my days. I hit go. My chart's blank. That means there's no stock data for that day. So what if I adjust this to February 9th to February 11th? So three days, a span of three days. I hit go. Now I will see some dates pop up. This is because these dates are the business days, whereas the 9th was the non-business day. So um, I could not find that data for the 9th, but I can find data for the 10th. So you can go ahead and just take the day that is closest to the day you want. So if you search for the day you want and it pops up blank, that's because there's no data for that day. Just search for a day close to that. I recommend for each day you do, just go ahead and search a range of three days. So then you'll get at least one day's worth of data, unless you just happen to hit that three-day weekend of Labor Day, um, Martin Luther King Day, stuff like that. Um, but most of the time, if you go ahead and search a span of three days, you'll find one that is closest and then just choose the closest day to the one you're looking for. Um, and then so you start with one year ago and then you do three month increments after that. So I would do three months after February 11th, 
three months after that, three months after that until you get the whole year. All right, I hope this helps. Let me know if you guys have any more questions.